So our lecture uh, start now. And as what you just did in the one session, you can see that you have to evaluate the clothes, right? You have to see what is the good point of a clothes and what didn't fit the model, so you have to alter it. And then you have to show everyone why you do this. This is the spirit of evaluation. It's just that your target change from speeches to clothes. Okay, and now we'll go back to speeches. So today the topic is what? Okay. Today the topic, obviously, is evaluation. And here I want to do a simple self-introduction. My name is Claire, and I'm now a junior in the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature in NTU. And this is my evaluation experience. I've been individual evaluator, language or general judges for uh, times, yes. And then this is my overview experience. I have been the president and the education vice president before. Okay. Okay, so very simple self introduction. Okay, now, let me talk about what is evaluation. In Toastmasters, evaluation are divided into three parts individual, language, and general evaluation. Individual evaluation, you do the evaluation on personal speeches, and language is the all the language aspect of the whole meeting. And general simply do the evaluation of everything in the meeting. Okay? And today we're going to focus on only individual evaluation. And also the abbreviation of individual evaluation is IE. But also according to our IPB Joyton, it can also be translated into improvement and encouragement. So bear it in mind, when you are doing IE, please, that your purpose is to encourage the speaker. You are not going to scare the speaker so he or she cannot do any speeches anymore. Okay? You have to encourage him or her. Why we evaluate? Why we do evaluation? First, evaluation requires little preparation time. You don't need to write a script. Because you have to come to a meeting and listen to a speech so you know what you're going to say. Little preparation. Especially suitable if you are like you are taking a test, you don't have time to prepare for your speech. Then you can sign up for evaluation. Okay. <laughs> right. And it's like a combination of prepared speech and table topic. Why prepare speech? Because you have to know the content and the skills regarding to prepare speech, so you can talk about prepared speech, right? Table topic because the preparation time of evaluation is much shorter than prepared speech, so it's kind of in the middle of prepared speech and table topic. And also, you help others and also yourself. By evaluating others, you can find others' good points and the suggestion that they can improve. So you can use it on yourself. When you see others making some uh, tiny mistakes, you will remind yourself that you will not put it in your own speech. Also, you will learn how to listen analyze and organize your ideas and feedback in a short period of time. This is really important. And here are some basic rules. In Toastmasters, evaluation requires at least two minutes and at most 3.5 minutes. You'll see the green board at two minutes, yellow 2.5, red 3 minutes. And if you pass 3.5 minutes, you will be disqualified. And the CC level. Usually the evaluator's CC level have to be greater than the speaker, or at least equal to the speakers. Okay. And another basic rule, just like what I said, individual evaluation is for encouraging, not for criticizing. Okay, bear this in mind. Okay, so now let's start to how to do evaluation. First, during the speech you are doing no taking. Everyone should have their own method of doing notes. Today I'll tell you some tips of doing notes, but this is just my own way. You should eventually find your own way of note taking. And as long as the method is clear for you to review and organize the ideas right after the speech, it, it is a good method. Okay. And evaluator is allowed to bring notes on stage, but make sure you can identify your own handwriting. Okay. I've made that mistake before. I came on the stage, came on the stage, and I look at my notes, and I just can't read it. So it's like as if I didn't take it on stage at all. Okay. And here I will give you my own example of me taking notes. Okay. 
Hey, you yeah, see, this is usually what I do to take notes. Before the evaluation, I will take out three papers, three pieces of paper, and I will write, divide it into two parts, the good points and the suggestions. And I will write in the left part, opening body and conclusion. And take notice, opening body conclusion, what I mean is my own opening body conclusion for the evaluation, not the speaker's opening body conclusion, but mine, the evaluator's. And what can you do before you even listen to a speech? You can see the agenda, look at the agenda, or you can see it days before online. You can see the title and the project, right? So you can search what is that project. For example, C1, the icebreaker, C2, what is C2? Organize your speech, C3, get to the point. So you can, you, you all have a manual, you can see what the project is about. And then you can think, uh, why, what should the speaker acquire for this project? And also, you get a title, right? You can try to guess what he or she is going to say. For example, last time I get Pei Fang's speech, and I see her title is about Harry Potter. So I, I know she's going to talk about Harry Potter, but I don't know what aspect she's going to talk about. But then I can start to think about my opening and conclusion. You can even think about your opening and conclusion before the evaluation. Okay? For example, I can think about, I can link the project and the title together. Is the topic choose suitable for the project? Like, is uh, Harry Potter and Harry, uh, Pei Fang's project is to research a topic. So I can make the link. So is she going to do some research on Harry Potter? And the, con and the result is that I'm right. Okay. So actually, this is what I wrote. I think I should turn off. This is what I wrote before I hear, before I heard Pei Fang's speech. I write, I know it's not clear. The topic choice is Harry Potter. It is a great topic, why? Because many people are familiar with Harry Potter. This is what I can know before the speech, right? And project C7, research or topic. And then I search what this project is about, okay? And then I write a conclusion. And my conclusion, I write, Oh, because Pei Fang's title is To Harry Potter, The Boy Who Lived. So I write a conclusion to Pei Fang, the girl who just delivered a successful speech. So I'm going to use this as a conclusion. But notice that because you write it before the speech, so you may not use, even use it. You just prepare it as a back backup. So you will not feel nervous if you can really think of anything to say during your preparation. Okay, this is your backup. Okay, now. During the speech, you take notes. And the notes can be messy, but you have to identify it. This is my note during Pei Fang's speech. You can see I use many symbols, and I you only write down the keyword, like the start, Pei Fang has a question, start, question, and she is very serious, serious. And then she linked, here's a, here's a what is that, arrow. She linked Harry Potter to the real world by psychology issues. Okay? She linked Harry Potter to the real world by psychology issues. So you can see that I can write a note very fast because I only write down the keywords and use some symbols to link them together. And the suggestions, she forgot the, her lines two times, so forgot lines uh, two. Okay. Uh, her hand gesture will some sharp by. Okay, the gesture hood. <laughs> okay, and okay. So when you're taking the notes, the main point is that you have to write it very quickly. And you, uh, I would suggest you do not write the whole sentence down because when you're writing the whole sentence, you will miss the next sentence he or she is speaking. Okay. And then this is why I do after the speech, I rewrite my notes on another piece of paper. And then I make it into the exact time sequence I'm going to talk about, the exact pattern I'm going to talk about. So you can see, this is my opening of my evaluation. This is the body part, and this is the conclusion. And you can see that I change, uh, all right, I change the opening because I think what I after what I heard about Pei Fang's speech, I think what I originally thought, 
I cannot use it. So I think of a new opening. But for the conclusion, because I was right, people really talk about really use to Harry Potter the boy who lived this session in her speech. So I remain the conclusion I already I already thought of. Okay? So opening body conclusion and for the final draft of your note, you can write more words on it, but not the whole sentence. It will be difficult to read when you're on stage, but you can write more words. Like I said, project C7, research or topic. Topic, Harry Potter, great choice. Everyone is familiar with Harry Potter? Familiar with Harry Potter? Somebody even grew up with him? And by announcing your topic, you grab the interest, okay? So I start, I actually start from the verb. So the original draft, I start from the keyword, I start from the noun. But here I start from the verb. Okay, drew out what's in, announce your topic, grab the interest. Okay, this is what you do for the final draft. And yeah, there is the same. And the, conclu and the conclusion is basically the same as what I originally written. the materials for your opening and conclusion, but you have to bear in mind that you may or may not use them. During the speech, you write down whatever pops into your head and write down the keywords, or you can draw, use abbreviation or symbols, etc. After the speech, you analyze your notes and you choose what to say and what to eliminate, because you may write a lot more than you can say during the speech. Write the final notes clearly and mark the time sequence. You write following the time sequence so you will not mess up on the stage. And make sure you have backup. What means that you make sure you have backup? What if you prepare the final draft and you stand on the stage and you finish all the, finish all the notes but the group board on the race is not raised? What can you do? You quickly take out the original draft. You quickly take out that one and talk about the part that you had eliminated originally. Okay, so make sure that you have backups. And then you just practice, practice, and practice, and then you go on the stage. Okay, so the whole process during the speech and after the speech is from you, from the speaker go on the stage, after the table topic session, and then it's your turn. Okay. Okay, and it's time for you to go on the stage. Here's a few things to know beforehand. Evaluation is like a mini speech. So which means that you have to have body, opening body and conclusion too. And your evaluation should include both good points and suggestion. In Toastmasters, we call the good points kiss and the suggestion kick. So the way of doing evaluation are not limited. So the following are only guidelines and hopefully you'll eventually develop your own style of doing evaluation. Okay, so let's go into the opening body and conclusion of your evaluation. Opening. Why do we need an opening for evaluation? Because imagine, when you go on the stage and you say, Emma, here's the good point of your speech, blah, 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 and here's the suggestion, blah, 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 the end. This is really impolite. So you have to do an opening to go in, go smoothly into your body. How to start? You can talk about your first impression of the speech, or you review a small part that touches you the most, or you can do the briefing. But make sure if you're doing the briefing, that don't say you do not make it too long because you are not a speaker and you are the evaluator. So if you use most of your time doing the briefing, you are the speaker. And you can apply, I don't know how to translate it into English. You can apply the scope in the speech you heard. You can repeat it again. Just like what I did, Pei Feng, uh, in the end of her speech, she said, everybody please raise up your water bottle and said, to Harry Potter, the boy who lived. So in the end of my evaluation, I said, everyone please raise up your water bottle to Pei Feng, the girl who just delivered a successful speech. Okay, 
apply the g in the speech. So here's an example. Everyone joins this on the stage. I'm blown away by his confidence. And this speech is no exception. I'm really touched by Joey's story, especially the part that he struggles with his decision of future career. He told us that blah, blah, blah that you will uh, recall the part that Joey has said. Then we go to the body. The body part, you can include three to four good points and two to three suggestions, but be aware of the time limit. And the body part, you will apply the kiss, kick, and kiss method. What is kiss, kick, and kiss? Here is the opening body conclusion. In the body part, first you kiss, and then you kick. And then in the conclusion, you kiss again. It is understandable, right? You kiss someone, and then you kick someone. And to comfort him or her, you kiss him again, right? So in the body part, what can I talk about? You can talk about the speech content. For example, the type. If it's a humorous speech, does it really raise up the laughter among the audience? If it's storytelling, is, does the story flow? Or if it's educational, can the audience really understand what the speaker is talking about? Is there a core value? And can the audience understand the core value successfully? Structure, is the structure well organized? Does it have an opening body and conclusion? Or other special methods, because for example, if the speaker uses metaphor, self mocking, etc., you can all analyze this. The thing you can say is infinite. Okay? Here's another example. It is a humorous speech, and indeed, she successfully made the audience laugh cheerfully. What's even better is that beside the ha ha point, the listener also learned a life lesson from it. This is a core value, okay? which is blah, blah, blah. I have to say this is a great topic choice because blah, blah, blah. So we just finished talking about speech content. Or you can talk about speech skills. For example, eye contact. Body language, gesture. Movement is the movement of the body. The use of microphone, just like what Richard has said in the professional club. Okay, another example. The speaker makes interaction with the audience by stretching out his hands for response. To make it even better, I would suggest that he walks around a little bit to avoid always facing the center direction of the audience. And here is some more vocal variety, emotions. If you want to emphasize something, you should be loud. And if you're telling a story and you're talking about something really emotional, your voice should be soft. Dialogues. Does the speaker do mimicking, storytelling, and does he or she do it successfully? Visual ads. Does the speaker use slides, and does the slide help the speaker or bother the speaker? Pictures or props. And there are many, many more, like facial expression, the interaction with the audience, and a lot more. This is for you to discover. Now this, remember to give both good points and suggestions. That is, in the body part, kiss and kick. Okay, finally, we come to the conclusion. For the conclusion, you just do one thing, to kiss, to kiss the speaker in the end. It is this part. So, the conclusion does not, do not need to be long. Just be clear and precise and encourage the speaker. Okay, and the most important one, of course, is to be aware of the time limit. Here's a conclusion I use in, uh, when I'm evaluating Minnie's speech. Okay. All in all, to thank Minnie for giving us such a profound speech. Please remember this very first speech you heard in Antutu's Masters, but oh, because the speech title is Remember to Forget. So I use, uh, I apply this. But instead of to remember to forget, this time, remember to bear it in mind. Okay. So you use this, you actually use the speaker's title to do the conclusion. How do you give suggestion? It's uh, more e it's easier to give good points, right? You just praise the speaker. But how do you give suggestion without hurting their heart? First of all, avoid negative transitional words. However, but nevertheless, 
You may wonder, this is what I write in, in all my conversation, English conversation, right? But what will occur if you use an evaluation? Uh, can I use Emma as an example again? Emma, your speech is great. You have great eye contact and your body moves naturally, but... <laughs> you get the feeling, right? It's like you are eliminating all the parts you just said. And this you can understand, a voice from emotional words like useless, bad, terrible, etc. Instead, you should set friendly, friendly suggestions with ways to improve. You not only give suggestions, you have to tell the speaker what he or she can do to improve. You point out the weaknesses and give advice. It's possible you can demonstrate it yourself, but of course this is only when you have time to demonstrate. Always give reasons. Always give reasons. So you can say this part is really great because I would suggest you ch you change this part because this when you give reasons, the audience you can persuade the audience to accept your evaluation. How to avoid being over time? This is a problem that many seniors face. Directly go to the kick part when you see the green board. No matter how many good points you're going to say, you see the green bar, then you go to the kick bar. Time limit. The kick bar should start from the green bar, two minutes. So here's a little review. For the opening, you can talk about your first impression, do the briefing of the speech, or you review just a small part. For the body, you can talk about the content, skills, vocal varieties, video aids, etc. There's infinite ways to say. Conclusion, just be clear and precise. And the most important thing is to remember to kiss and kick and kiss. Okay, and before our intermission, let's do some little relaxation, okay? This is a speech by John Zimmer in a humorous contest. This is a speech, prepared speech in a humorous contest. But the topic, he used evaluation as his topic. This is very interesting. He used evaluation in his prepared speech. Okay, so let's watch it.